people doubt, I'm, I think this is the first for me, um, pre nine o'clock speaking to um, players and staff here at um, Bristol Rovers, an early start, but um, good chance to get some prep in ahead of tomorrow's game. Yeah, I know, it just goes to show the easy life you uh, <laughs> reporters actually have, don't you really, to be honest, I'm, I'm always up early, but uh, yeah, you stroll in first time before nine o'clock, but yeah, no, all good, yeah, I'm ready to go up, we're going to uh, train at uh, Rotherham. So we'd like to thank them for letting us use the training pitch. We'll get up there nice and early, have a good session up there. And then obviously look forward to tomorrow's game. How much thinking and planning does go in? You know, you've got a long trip to Barnsley and Blackpool the week after. Um, how much preparation goes into it and having a decision to make? You know, do you train there or before you leave? No, nah, normally we just blag it. So, <laughs> no, nah, there's always decisions to make. Uh, we, f we felt like we felt the benefit of uh, sometimes getting up there early missing the traffic so it would be in a six seven hour trip getting up there early and it's, it's difficult at times to to get somewhere to train that's the only thing so you're looking at you know favors from teams we've used aston villa's training ground this year uh we've uh we've used sheffield united's training ground this year so you know thanks to them and, and rotherham are kindly returning a favor that i gave them uh a year or so ago <laughs> i was going to say is, is it a case in football you scratch my back i'll scratch yours well it's difficult because we don't own our own training ground obviously so at uh so at times we're, we're dead we're always dead uh, you know we, we go by what what cribs say really to be honest with you but uh, there's one or two times they've done us a favor and allowed uh, other teams to use a training pitch for an hour what do we make of Barnsley? We spoke briefly about them on the phone yesterday. Um, they are unbeaten at home, but sides have got there and, um, and got points out of them. Well, listen, we know it's going to be one of the toughest games in the division on paper, but uh, nothing's nothing's won and lost on paper. They're one of the fancy teams to to bounce straight back, and I think the the the, the power of the, the certainly the power of the squads that have come down from the championship now. The, the goal's pretty big from League One to the Championship. I think getting bigger at times, and I think when when teams have come down, they've obviously got strong. Depth of, of players that have, have played in the championship, so it's obviously a tough game, but uh, certainly a game that I think we can go up there and win. We'll have a game plan for the Pacific game, and like we normally do, and, and try and build on uh, the win Tuesday night. It's very well publicised. Premiership clubs relegated the championship; they get parachute payments. Um, is there an equal gulf from Championship clubs to League One when they go down? Do they have more money than League One clubs? That's a good question. I'm not sure. Mm. So uh, I'm not sure how that works. I know they get a certain money, but. A lot of players now are on two, three-year contracts, and normally nine times out of ten, when they when they drop down into to League One, they've still got a, a, a squad that's Championship quality in there. So uh, I think that's the the biggest difference. Um, and when they have players like Kiefer Moore, who I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of, when he was at Yeovil, um, he was on the bench in recent games. It just shows the strength of their squad, doesn't it? Yeah, they've got, certainly got a strong squad. A lot of managers spoke highly of, of, uh, of how they've performed so far this season. I know they've had a couple of iffy results just lately but it just goes to show the, the competitiveness of the league and that there's there's no guarantees in this uh, in uh, in this league and we're going to go up there and try and spoil the party and is it a level-headed Bristol Rovers you won on, on Tuesday you're someone who doesn't get down when you lose that, have you noticed level-headed cool. I ain't, ain't going to get excited by a scruffy win right. on a Tuesday night uh, that's for sure but why I'm pleased with the commitment of the, the players um, I, I thought there were a lot of people putting their bodies on the line. You see Tony Craig with a massive gash in his eye. He got smashed in the in the game previously. His eye was three times the size it was, but yeah, he's, he's still putting everything in for the shirt. And that epitomises what what he's about. You see, his, his Millwall days were coming through him a little bit there, to be honest with you. So, we, and we need more of that. We, we know we're fighting, we're scrapping. Uh, certainly, uh, it's not where we wanted to be. But you have to deal with it when you're in these situ situations. No good putting your head in the sand and and, uh, and not talking about it, and not discussing it. And the, the players have got to perform under a pressure when we we near the bottom than the than the top, and we we we'll we'll deal with that. Yeah, Tony's never going to be the prettiest footballer. Is, is he in his best form since joining Bristol Rovers? Well, I, I, I listen, I think he's fantastic. He's been fantastic in the changing rooms. I, th I think it was a key key appointment for ourselves because the the old school leaders uh, they're not out there anymore. To be honest with you, they don't make them in the academies, in my opinion. And, you know, Academy's been running a long time now, so 27, 28-year-old players now don't really show that leadership either. But uh, with Tony, you get that in abundance. So not just on the pitch, off the pitch, he's, uh, he's a massive, massive help as well. Safe trip. Thank you.